Um, my journey to be sitting in this chair at Great Ormond Street has been one of uh, accident and falling through open doors. Um, so I was brought up in Sheffield and went to school there. Um, went to university in Newcastle, uh, where I had a wonderful time, and then um, taught anatomy there. I did my house jobs there, taught anatomy there for a year in the university, and then thought I should get away, and went to Southampton, where I worked in uh, Southampton and Lymington, and then had to apply for rotation appointments. Newcastle advertised first because it's so cold, and um, so I went back up there <laughs> and got the job. Um, had a really um, interesting rotation of the usual things where I did cardiac surgery on the rotation and plastic surgery on the rotation and I thought I'd be a plastic surgeon. That's what I was aiming for. Uh, but the cardiac surgeons said would I... Uh, I enjoyed the cardiac surgeon. They asked me if I'd like to go back and eventually go and work in San Francisco with a guy called Gabodi who was quite famous at the time. That sounded all right. So I went, uh, but they said you'd have to come and work with us for six months so you don't let the side down when you go over there. Um, anyway, I, I went to do that job, um, met a man called George Alberti, who was a, um, a diabetologist my wife was working with at the time. And he basically said, uh, you know, why are you doing this stupid job? Why don't you do something proper, a uh, bit of science? And really got, um, encouraged me and worked with me to write a, a grant application for a science project. And I ended up with a project and some, and a grant, but no job basically and so I never went to San Francisco <laughs> got an academic uh, senior registrar job thanks to a chap called Mike Holden who's a bit of one of my mentors and very quickly realized that um, whilst the research was fine I enjoyed that a lot um, it included biochemistry which I got the lowest mark ever recorded for as an undergraduate so that was a shock to everyone um, and uh, uh, and the, the, but the paediatrics just drew me in. Mike Holden particularly made, it, made me realise that was much more interesting. And I was sent down to Great Ormond Street for a year's training and never escaped. Um, while here, I've uh, been involved in um, setting up a whole bunch of services. And I was lucky enough to work with some really great people here, uh, Mark de Laval, Yarda Stark, the two surgeons who taught me um, who wrote big textbooks. We've had an endless series of American trainees who I've worked with and who we trained um, and had the opportunity to do research and develop new techniques all the way through that time. was involved in setting up the transplant program here and most recently I set up the tracheal service, the national service for severe tracheal disease in children and culminating and I was doing the first stem cell uh, supported transplant in a child in the world. Um, a couple of years ago and uh, you know so that the opportunity to really work with really really smart people I, I'm a great fan of that phrase of Steve, Stephen Truman that one of my American colleagues told me he was a philosopher and said how did you get to be where you are and he thought for a moment and said hanging around smart people and I think that sums it up pretty well uh, there's always somebody in Great Ormond Street who knows more than you do about something and they're just down the road so you can, you can get help when you need it. I have no idea how I started this, really. My um, family is non-medical. Um, yeah, I didn't come from a medical family at all. Uh, I was only any good at biology and French at school, and there didn't seem to be any exits um, for that. And I had a very, really charismatic biology teacher called Dave Holford, who actually you know, made it interesting. And I just thought medicine seemed like a cool thing, but I didn't really know what it was. It was men with leather patches and pipes in those days, and um, I was 17, went to university, and no idea what it was. But what really shifted it was being on the anatomy dissection table, you know, at 17 with a corpse in front of you, um, was that they kind of got in Newcastle the relationship between what you're learning and what you're going to do and the people you're treating. So very quickly, I was, we were dissecting this bit of the neck, and um, somebody come into the casualty department across the road with a knife in the, that part of the neck, and we were taken to see it. So suddenly, all of this area became relevant. Otherwise, you're just learning something you put in a why am I doing that box. But the relationship between real knowledge and a real patient means that you remember it. And actually, as a surgeon, I think I, I, I remember things by the person, my hands in some sort of three-dimensional spatial way, 
and um, and doing it in, in a way that I don't necessarily do from reading something or learning something slightly different, I imagine, from historians. Mm. We'll see. <laughs> it's very difficult to look back and say that you're proud of anything you've done if you're uh, in sitting where I am now because I actually don't think, or to be truthful, you never think you've achieved very much because everything is minor steps based on what other people have done before. I suppose there are a couple of things that I've done that I, I feel were made a change, one of which was to develop a technique called ultrafiltration, um, which removes water from children during heart surgery, and that became very widely accepted and was, was important, I think. And the second, um, apart from being involved in almost every piece of work that we've done, has been setting up the tracheal service and all the research that's gone along with that. The mortality for that was really, really high when we set it up, and we've now built up the most successful service in the world. We've got fantastic results, and we are innovating all the time. And those innovations may be tiny steps, but they're really genuine innovations. I think the other thing is that I've learned through working here to recognize what other people are doing around about and suck all that in and, and um, help people through. But it's being Honestly, it's very hard to look back and feel proud as an individual because I feel more proud to be part of this team.